ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين المختار الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين انتہائی محترم اور مکرم میرے بزرگ و نوجوان ساتھی و عزت ماں میری ماں اور بہنوں اپنے معمول کے مطابق آقائے نامدار ہم سب کے تاجدار حضور خاتم المرسلین رحمت للعالمین صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی بارگاہ میں مل کر درود پاک کا حدیعہ پیش کریں اور پڑھیں اللہم صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا و شفیعنا و مولانا محمد و آلہ و صحبہ و بارک و سلم صلاة و سلام علیہ یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم ذلقادہ کا مہینہ سٹارٹ ہو چکا ہے اس مہینے کے آتے ہی حج پر جانے والے حج کی تیاریاں کرتے ہیں وہ خوش نصیب جن کو اللہ تبارک و تعالی یہ توفیق عطا فرماتا ہے اللہ کے گھر کی جانب روانگی کی تیاریاں کرتے ہیں The month of Zulqada is one of the very special months As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in the Holy Qur'an إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِثْنَ عَشَرَ شَهْرَ The count of months to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says إِثْنَ عَشَرَ شَهْرَ There are 12 months Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then stated مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ Among these four months, among these 12 months there are four months which are classed as the month of Hurmat, the month of respect and month of Izzat. What is the meaning of a month being the month of Hurmat? In the time of Prophet ﷺ, for some time and before Rasul Karim والسلام, during these months people would not have any kind of fight and battle including non-Muslims, they used to respect these months and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He kept the sanctity of these months and He mentioned in the Holy Quran that these four months are the month of hurmat, month of respect. Which means a person, especially a believer, he should be very cautious about his amal during 12 months. But in particular, these four months a person should be very cautious, very careful about his deed, about his way of life, about how he's leading his life. A month of Zulqada is very special. When people prepare for Hajj, when people go for Hajj, there is only one reason behind it. People may have different intentions, but the original an actual reason behind performing Hajj is to listen to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To listen to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ke bande ko Allah ne Hajj karne ka hukm diya uske paas istitaat hui us istitaat par usne foran apne rab ki awaz par lambay kaha aur Hajj ke liye tayyar ho gaya. This is the sole purpose and the reason that Allah commanded you and I and therefore people who are able to perform Hajj they must go for Hajj. If you look at the importance of Hajj and the reason why I would like to discuss this today and inshallah next Juma as well will continue. The reason is as time is getting close to the Qiyamah as time and this dunya is getting close to the end, people have become very materialistic. 
Suppose that if you look at the Ummah today, and if you look around us, we can see that there are many people who are able to perform Hajj, physically and financially. Mali taur pe bhi mazboot hai, badani taur pe bhi mazboot hai, phir bhi Hajj nahi karte. Even then, having physical and financial stability, people are reluctant to perform Hajj. And I mentioned a few Jumas ago that this reluctancy is because we look at how much we'll have to spend. We'll have to spend a few thousand pounds, over 10,000 nowadays. We look at that cost and then we try and make the sense that these 10,000 or 12,000, and if the couple is going, then 22, 24,000 pounds, if I use it somewhere else, if I invest it, if I give it to someone who can make it double for me, then why should I lose these 24,000 pounds? This is one of the idea that shaitan gives to you and I, even if you are able to perform hajj, this do come in your mind. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? As shaytanu yaidukum al faqara Shaitan, he gives you this anxiety, this you know fear of poverty and this fear of poverty comes when for most of us spending on ourselves we will not be as reluctant as when it comes to spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are okay and we are fine to go out and spend 100 pounds on a couple a day out but when you come to masjid on Friday Giving five pounds becomes very difficult. Now, who puts this reluctance in you? It is shaitan. Shaitan gives you this fear that if you will give, if you spend for the hajj, you'll become poor. But we'll come to know the hadith of Rasulullah Kareem sallallahu ta'ala wasallam that how important and how, you know, full of blessings this act of hajj is. The first of all, if you try and understand that Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam, which means the entire building of Islam, one of the pillars that's holding it is Hajj. And that is the reason anyone who denies the obligation of Hajj will be classed as kafir and infidel. So to believe the obligation and farziyat of Hajj is necessary. And when it becomes compulsory on you, when you are physically and financially able to perform the Hajj, it is necessary for you to perform the Hajj that year, if you don't have any reason. For example, reason when we had pandemic, for two years or so, there was no Hajj. So there was a genuine reason that you cannot perform the Hajj, that's a different matter. But just because something that you can avoid something that you can sort out and you still do not go for Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about it. And especially Imam al-Shafi'i, rahmatullahi ta'ala, according to him, that whichever year Hajj becomes fold on you, you must perform the Hajj in that year. If you won't, you'll get sin. You are a sinner, you'll get gunah. So Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam. Now, if you look at it, that Hajj, when we count the pillars of Islam, Shahada, Salah, Zakah, Sumit, Hajj. The fifth and last pillar of Islam is Hajj. Because Hajj became compulsory among the obligations at the end. And Sahaba, they mentioned the hadith of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab ta'ala anhu, which is very famous that <coughs> a Yahudi, a Jew questioned Hati Umar. And he said that you have one of the ayah in the Holy Quran that if that sort of ayah, that kind of verse was revealed upon us, we would take that day as the day of Eid. Those words which Allah has revealed upon you, if they were revealed upon us, we would take the day, the day of Eid. What were those words? The Umar asked him, what are you referring to? The Yahudi said, I am referring to Al-Yawm Akmaltu Lakum. Ni'amati wa atmamtu alaykum al-yawm akmaltu lakum deeni wa atmamtu alaykum ni'amati 
Today I have completed my religion upon you and I have given you the complete favor. Allah said to Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. Mean, the ayah is telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Islam and this deen that Allah has given you is the complete religion. It is completed now. There is no addition, there is no sub subtraction, there is nothing less or more can be in Islam. The, the Yahudi said that this ayah, if this was revealed upon us, we would take that day, the day of Eid. Now look at Sahaba. Hati Umar said, I know exactly when this ayah was revealed. What was the day and where was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Hati Umar said, it was the day of Arafah. Imagine, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he performed only one Hajj in his entire life. Yes? Hati Umar says, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa on 9th of Zul Hajj, on the day of Arafah, when he was on his camel, sitting and praying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed this ayah that, Oh my beloved, today we have completed Islam for you. We have done all the ahkamat that were supposed to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. We have done that. Hati Umar said, I know that. Yes, which means Hajj is so important that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Hajj compulsory, Traffic warden. Traffic warden. There is a traffic warden. If you are parked on single double yellow, please move your cars. Yes, so as mentioned, the Hajj is so important among the pillars of Islam that Rasulullah is performing the Hajj and Allah says, Now your deen is complete. So without Hajj, the deen remains incomplete. Allahu Akbar. Now look at the Quran and the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in his blessed book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَعِ إِلَيْهِ السَّبِيلَ Upon people, it is necessary to perform the hajj for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first word that begins with is وَلِلَّهِ Hajj is for whom? لِلَّهِ For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for any other reason. It is only and solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah commanded you and I, and we are able to do so now, we are going to his house. This is the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Quran says when Hati Ibrahim salam, he completed rebuilding the holy Kaaba, Allah commanded him, Make the announcement, Adhin, give azan of hajj. As an announcement, make the announcement of Hajj for the people and they will come to you walking on their feet. They will come to you on their transportations. Now imagine Hayati Ibrahim Al -Islam, and this is written by not only Sunni scholars, it's written by different groups as well under this ayah. But imagine Hayati Ibrahim Al -Islam. There is no mic, there is nothing there which can convey his voice to many people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded him just to make the announcement. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who made his voice reach to every single soul who said Labbaik. Imagine when people go to Hajj and when you, make, when you put the Ihram, when you pray to Rakats, Nafl, before you make the intention, once you make the intention, the first thing you have to say is what? Talbiyah. You have to say, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. Wallah, I'm present. What Labbaik are you? What is the question so you are answering to? When did Allah call you? It was the call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Hazrat Ibrahim, Wa'adhin fin nas. Make the announcement among people now. When your call comes, you answer to that call of Ibrahim that you are going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a great privilege when a, when a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he prepares for Hajj and he leaves his house for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look at the ahadith and ponder upon that if you spend Suppose a cup as a couple, 24,000 pounds, 
Is it worth? The question comes, and especially those who are investors, if you ask them the question, if they have no, what do you call, agar deen ki unko hawa nahi lagi hai, to wo aapko ye kahenge ki ye 24,000 mujhe de do, ek saal ke baad haj ke liye jana. Ye 24 ko mein 48 karke aapko de dunga. Phir haj ke liye chale jana. Look at the ahadith of Rasulullah Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you really wait? And should you really wait to gain all of these barakat? In Bukhari and Muslim, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala an, is the narrator and says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, Man hajjahad had al bayt. Anyone who performed the hajj of this house, came to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to perform the hajj, listening and acting upon the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَمْ يَرْفُثْ وَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ He did not commit any sin on his journey. He did not misuse his tongue. All of his journey, he was pious, looking after his physical acts as well as what's coming out from his mouth. Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated, رَجَعَكْ أَمَا وَلَدَتْكُ أُمُّهُ when he returns to his house, he returns to his house as if his mother has given him birth that day. Not in terms of age. His age remains the same. He could be 70 and goes for Hajj. And he protects the boundaries of Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he returns to his house, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, he comes to his house and all of his sins are completely gone with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah forgives the sin of his servant. <clears throat> Again, if you think that if I spend so much money, Hajj has gone so inexpensive nowadays, what would happen then? Would I have any savings left or not? Listen to this. Umar radiallahu ta'ala is the narrator of this hadith and Imam Ahmad and Ibn Majah, both of them they have mentioned this hadith in their books. And he said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, Tabi'u bayna al-hajji wal-umrah. Tabi'u bayna al-hajji wal-umrah mean if you have performed the umrah, now next, your goal should be hajj. If you have done the hajj, your goal should be go for Umrah. Tabio, Hajj and Umrah. Hajj and Umrah. Like that. Then Rasulullah stated, Because if you do that, follow Hajj with Umrah, Umrah with Hajj, Rasulullah stated that doing this, it removes the poverty from you. You were worried. That you have spent 24,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds going for the Hajj. It is not decreased from your account. Indeed, in this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to replace it. As well as in the hereafter, you'll get reward from Allah azawajal. This is guaranteed. This is the guarantee from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Prophet said, Tanfil faqra. It takes the poverty away. What <laughs> dunu? And the bonus with that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins too. It takes your sins away as well. Kama yanfil kiru khabth al hadith. Have you seen the iron which is rusted? How difficult it is for you and I. You have to use different types of chemicals, different types of, you know, uh, paper, sandpaper, whatever you have to use to remove it. When a person goes for hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes poverty, takes poverty away from him. As well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes his sins. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu gave an example. The way, the way that fire takes the rust away from the iron. When you put any iron, piece of iron in the fire which is rusted. Once it burns and then you remove it, the iron will be clean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this honor to someone who is going to visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, just if you look at it, these fada'il, these virtues that Allah and His Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam wa jalla wa ula, they have mentioned, these fada'il are for something which is necessary upon us to do, which is fault upon 
sahibi istitaat to do. Suppose you pray salah five times. Why do you pray salah? Because it's further upon us to do so. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reward us, we still have to pray. But it is His mercy that you perform the obligatory ibadat, you perform the fara'is, and yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave you alone and He rewards you on every single act that you do. Therefore, my brothers, the conclusion is Hajj is a vital part of life of a Muslim. If a person is able to go, able to go and visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Physically and financially, he is, he is stable to visit and perform the Hajj. He must do so as soon as possible. Because Prophet said, you don't know. The Mars will come to you. You won't be able to go. The death will come to you. You won't be able to go next year. There is no delay. One final thing that has become very common in sisters nowadays. They ask questions, do I need a mahram to go for Umrah and Hajj? When you go for Haram and Tayyiban, you are not going there for holidays. It is not a destination to go and spend your time as you are going for holidays. It's a, it's a spiritual and soul uplifting journey. The Fuqaha and Islam does not allow any woman to go without the Mahram. If the government has permitted, they must have their reasons. A lot of money they will make out of single women going for Hajj and Umrah. But then, the ulama, they have mentioned that every single step she will take, Allah says in his Fatawa Raduiyya, every, every single step that she will take, the lanat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be upon her. If she is thinking that she is going for some great journey, she is mistaken. Islam has given this mahram and ghair mahram concept, this remains and we cannot change it. This is from Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant all of us the ability to visit His house and perform the Hajj in our lifetime and those brothers and sisters who are planning and going for Hajj. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept this journey and make this journey easy for them.